what we want to do here is simplify this expression without using a calculator. Now, a lot of you out there probably could do this problem if it was uh, involving only a square root. But because we have a cube right here, this is going to be much more interesting. And a lot of you probably are not going to get this right. But uh, maybe you are the exception. So if you think you can do this problem, again, without a calculator, well, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Then, of course, we'll walk through exactly how to simplify this expression again without using a calculator this is an absolute must know algebra skill but uh, before we get started let me quickly introduce myself my name is john and i have been teaching middle and high school math for decades and if you need help learning math well check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com you can find a link to that in the description below and if this video helps you out or if you just enjoy this content make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out so again, what we want to do here is simplify this expression without using a calculator. Now, of course, there's going to be times where you're going to want to find the cube root of a number, and you need to know how to um, actually use your calculator to do that. So uh, if you wanted to find the cube root of this number, you would uh, take that value of this fraction to the one-third power. But that's kind of a separate discussion. But if you're interested in how to find the cube root of numbers, uh, or the fifth root or the seventh root. Uh, this is something called rational exponents. But uh, anyways, again, a separate topic, but uh, I bring it up because if you wanted to check your work here on a calculator, that's what you would have to do. Okay, but in order to do this problem, we need to understand some principles of radicals and square roots. And of course, you learn these principles when you first start studying square roots, and then these uh, problems kind of evolve into more interesting things like cube roots, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so these are the main uh, components or the main properties of radicals that we need to consider to do this problem right here. And hopefully, uh, you know, you looking at these things, uh, uh, you know, makes sense to you. Maybe this one right here is a little confusing, so I'm just going to quickly go over these right now. All right, so our first property is the following. When we have the square root or a radical of a fraction, we can actually break this up into two individual square roots or radicals. So the square root of A over B is equal to the square root of A over the square root of B. We will be using this in this problem, okay? Now, of course, this is the square root, but it could be the cube root as well, or the fifth root. Uh, just everything has to be cube roots or fifth roots or whatever the case might be. All right, same thing applies right here, that the square root of a number, and if you can look at this number or value in terms of its factors, so the square root of a times b is equal to the square root of a times the square root of b. So we can uh, break this up and we can just find the square roots of the radicals of the individual uh, uh, factors, okay? So this uh, property goes this way and this way. Uh, likewise, this property goes this way and this way. All right, so hopefully all of this makes sense to you. And the last thing here is the following. So you cannot leave your answer with an irrational number in the denominator. So let's suppose I had like seven over the square root of three, and you're like, I'm gonna turn this into my math teacher. I would say, no, no, don't do that. That's not good because right down here in the denominator, we have an irrational number. Okay, so the square root of three is irrational. Now, if you had like seven over the square root of four, this is not a problem because the square root of four, of course, is two which is rational, okay? But we can't have, uh, we can't leave our final answer with a uh, irrational number in the denominator, so we have to fix this up. So a quick review, how do we fix this problem right here? Well, we do something called rationalizing the denominator. So we're gonna multiply both the uh, denominator and the numerator by the square root of three, and it would fix this up. And of course, we'd have the square root of three times the square root of three. We'd be thinking about this property here, which is what? Well, that's the square root of nine or three. So this would be seven times the square root of three over three. All right, now, if you understand all of this, you're saying, yes, uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I get what you're saying. Well, these are the hints, these are the considerations that you need to be thinking about in order to do this problem right here. Okay, so if you didn't um, remember these properties and you maybe you know, wanna give this problem another try, well, pause the video and give it another try, but we're gonna go ahead and get into this right now. Okay, so first things first, I have the cube root of 27 over 16. So I'm gonna go ahead and break this up into two individual 
cube roots, right? So we're dealing with the cube root, not the square root, but it works the same way. So one big uh, radical, I could break it up into the, a radical of the numerator and a radical of the denominator. Of course, we're dealing with cube roots here. Now, this is uh, fantastic because the cube root of 27 is what? It's 3. Remember, the cube root is uh, um, asking the question, what number times itself 3 times gets back to 27? It is 3. So 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So the cube root of 27 is 3. All right, so hopefully most of you are with me at this point. And you're saying, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I see where you're going with this. Well, this is pretty good. And we have a good start here, but certainly our denominator needs some work. But we can uh, fix that up, the cube root of 16, by thinking about this property right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into that right now. So we have 3 over the cube root of 16. Uh, so obviously we can't leave our answer like this. But what we can do is break up 16 into its factors, right? So you want to be thinking of factors of 16. So you have 4 times 4. Now, this is okay. These are perfect square factors. This would be great if we were dealing with square roots. But we need to be kind of thinking in terms of cube roots, okay? So 4 and 4 is not going to really help us out. But 8 and 2, okay, would help us out because we know the cube root of 8, okay? So this is kind of the main idea. And a lot of you, I think, are probably pretty good at these problems when uh, they're only kind of square roots. But when you, you throw in, in a cube root, you're going to have to kind of think, you know, in your brain, you're going to have to be like, all right, and we kind of, I love drawing pictures. If you've seen uh, other of my videos, you can, you know, I just have fun with this stuff. All right, so you have to switch from this to the cube root in your brain, right? You have to make that leap here because if you're stuck on square root, you're not going to be able to see, uh, you know, the right solutions here. So for 16, I want to break 16 into the factors of 8 and 2. Okay, so we can write this as the cube root of 8 times 2. Now I can break this up into its component parts. So the cube root of 8, and I like this because I know what the cube root of 8 is. So what number times itself 3 times is 8? You might be saying, well, that's 2, Mr. YouTube Math Man, and you would be correct. So we have the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 2. And, uh, you know, we're just kind of whittling this problem down one step at a time, making it a little bit simpler and simpler. Okay, so we have 3 over the cube root of 8 times uh, the cube root of 2. Of course, this is the cube root of 16. So this right here is 2. The cube root of 8 is 2. So now we have 2 times the cube root of 2, or 3 over 2 times the cube root of 3. 2, excuse me, boy, I'm all over the place here. Okay, so this is where we're at, and we're making good progress, but uh, we have a problem, okay? And our problem is right here, we still have a uh, an irrational number that we have to get rid of, okay? So in this case, we're kind of at this uh, point in the problem, 7 over the square root of 3. So how can we get rid of this square root of 3? Well, we just kind of went over that. We multiplied uh, this uh, fraction right here, 7 over the square root of 3, by th uh, square root of 3 over the square root of 3, and it fixed the problem. Again, this is called rationalizing the denominator, and most of you are familiar with this when you work with square roots, but this is a little bit different. All right, so we've made some good progress, and I think most of you are like, okay, I understand, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, you know, all the steps up to here. So now we need to fix this fraction up. We need to fix this expression up. And the goal is to get rid of this irrational number in the denominator. I don't care if I have one up in the numerator, it's okay, but I can't have it down in the denominator. So the trick that we're going to use is we're going to multiply by 1. Okay. Now let's go back to this little problem that I was doing earlier in the video, 7 over the square root of 3. Remember, I multiplied both the denominator and the numerator by the square root of 3. Okay. Now hopefully... All of you out there, you know, are familiar with what I'm doing right uh, in this step, because if you're not familiar with this, well, this particular problem is going to be quite confusing. But what is the square root of 3 over the square root of 3? Well, anything divided by itself is 1. So we're just multiplying this by 1. So we're not changing the value, okay? We're rewriting the problem so it looks different. And the objective is, again, to get rid of those uh, irrational numbers in the denominator, right? So again, the main idea is to think about what expression can we think of that has a value of 1 such that we multiply by this, okay, and, but we get rid of this uh, 
uh, cube root expression down here in the denominator. So I'm going to give you a bit of a hint. Okay, you want to be thinking about this right here. Uh, numbers that you know the cube root of, right? So what numbers do we know the cube root of? Well, we know the cube root of 27, for example, right, which is 3. And we know the cube root of 8, which, of course, we know is 2. Now, there's other examples we could use as well. But one of these values is what we want to be thinking about in terms of simplifying this expression right here. Okay, so this is just a bit of a clue for those of you that want to kind of follow along or try to do this, you know, as I um, actually do it. Okay, so if you're thinking about this, hopefully this is what you are thinking. You're like, hey, maybe we could turn this thing into this thing. And if you're thinking in those terms, well, you are thinking right. Okay, so that's exactly what we want to do. We need to get a cube root situation in the denominator that we know the answer of. So if uh, you know we could turn this cube root of 2 into a cube root of 8, well, then I know the cube root of 8, that is going to be 2. So let's go ahead and do that, okay? This not a, it's not a problem here. So how can I turn a cube root of 2 into a cube root of 8? Easy, just multiply this thing by the cube root of 4, right? Because 2 times 4 is 8. So if I multiply the denominator by the cube root of 4, I've got to multiply the numerator by the cube root of 4 because, again, keep in mind, that this right here is just a fancy one. It's this thing divided by itself, which is one. Okay, so this is the main trick, and this is probably the most difficult, well, I don't want to say the most difficult part of, the, part of the problem, but this is the part of the problem that I think a lot of people may have struggled with. Okay, so if you understand this, let's actually go ahead and do the math right now. Okay, so let's focus in on the denominator again. So we have uh, two times the cube root of two, and we're going to multiply this times the cube root of 4 so we can end up with the cube root of 8. So this would be 2 times the cube root of 8, and then our numerator will be 3 times the cube root of 4. All right, so 2 times the cube root of 8. Again, the cube root of 8, pretty straightforward stuff. That is going to be equal to 2. So I have 3 times the cube root of 4 over 2 times 2 because this is 2, so that's 2 times 2 which of course is four, and here is our answer. And again, we don't care if we have this uh, irrational number up in the numerator. That's perfectly fine. It's in the denominator where there are issues, and why that's the case is kind of a separate uh, discussion. All right, so that is that. And don't feel bad if you didn't get this right. Again, I think a lot of um, algebra textbooks and math textbooks just don't have enough of uh, practice with these type of problems. Uh, certainly you will see this, but again, if you want to really learn something, uh, you know, it's not enough just to watch me do a problem. Be like, oh yes, I understand what, um, you know, Mr. YouTube Math Man did. So therefore, when I see a problem like this, I can do it. No, you, you know, that's deceiving. And that's, uh, you know, of course, you know, being a math student, for uh, you know studying mathematics for decades, I understand that. It, this is very easy. Uh, you have to watch yourself here when you're like, oh yes, I understand what's going on. I you know what the teacher is doing. Uh, therefore, I must understand it, or I can actually do this on a test or a quiz or homework. That's not the case. The only way you're going to build uh, this skill for yourself is through practice. You got to do follow-on problems if you really want to learn this stuff. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.